Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see you guys again. Always take some time for people to jump onto these live streams. Um, but I don't have that much time today. Um, in the middle of quite a quite a busy day, so I am gonna try to get started kind of right away. Um, so hello to all the replay viewers, <laughs> and for those of you obviously who um, come on a little bit later. Um, you know, always feel free to come back and watch the replay. Um, because today I want to talk about using the body to heal the brain. Um, so a lot, a lot, a lot of the lives that I do and the blogs that I do and the work that I do um, is, is around like mental restructuring, right? How do we use neuroplasticity and positive psychology and um, energy in order to um, kind of the mental energy of our thoughts and our and our, our, our language to to change the way that we feel and to change our beliefs and to change our perspectives and um, so that they're more life supporting um, right so that they they drive our happiness they drive our health they really kind of support us so a lot of the work that I that, that I do and that you hear me teach about is all about the kind of mental stuff but you know, in reality, I'm really a mind-body practitioner, and I don't talk about the body stuff as much on my lives because it's such a personalized thing. Um, it's really, it's really, really important to know your own body and what works for your own body. And God knows that has um, so many different like factors that go into it. You know, there's fact, you know, in terms of like your your genes and your hormones and where you're from and where you live and allergies and all this kind of stuff. So I don't talk as much about kind of the the using your body, so to speak. Um, and really by using your body, I mean really working with breath, working with exercise, working with diet, um, supplement herbs, um, interacting with nature, doing a lot of the uh, that kind of stuff in order to kind of improve your mental and emotional health, in order to feel good, in order to feel confident. Um, and I don't and I don't talk about a lot of it, but it's you know as important, equally as important as mental stuff that I always talk about, right? Or the psychological stuff that I always talk about. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about just some of the um, mistakes I always see people making when it comes to managing their kind of mental emotional health um and you know the biggest kind of culprits of of difficult kind of mental and emotional experiences that come from body related activities um and then i wanted to talk also about just kind of my own non-negotiables in terms of what i eat and how i exercise etc and some of the science behind that and then i'm going to chat a little bit about um, some really cool hacks that, that, you know, are easier. I think that ultimately, and, you know, I'll never lie to anybody who works with me or who talks with me. I do believe that ultimately, if you want to have a rockin' body and a rockin' mindset and, like, just really feel confident and positive and optimist, um, opt optimistic all the time, um, it really is a lifestyle, like, rehaul for many people, right? It really is about designing your day from morning till night um, in ways that are complementary to what's best for your for your health. Um, but in the meantime, there's tons of smaller hacks that you can start to do during the day in order to align, align with that ideal because it's not possible to change everything overnight. We all have crazy jobs, blah, 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 right? So I want to talk to you about um, all that stuff today. So um, first, I'll start out with a story. Uh, so yesterday, I was working with a client who is just our second session together, um, and a client who you know um, was was is experiencing depression. I would say, um, and so she's. It's a very kind of common case that I see. She's recently a college grad, um, and for the last year has been working in an office space. And it's her first time ever working like in an office space. And as you know, all of you guys know, when you're in college, you're like moving all around, you're walking to classes, you're over campus, like you just have like a lot of like things and activities that are keeping you really active, right? But then when you transition to the world of kind of corporate work, um, you're sitting at a desk and staring at the computer all day and it doesn't matter how passionate you may be about what you're staring at on the computer or you know what you're doing in that office chair um, the fact is that you are shutting down 
um, your body and your circulation and a lot of the really critical functions if you're staying still all the time. So um, I see this all the time. You know, she she became you know incredibly incredibly and progressively depressed. Um, you know, and came to me. You know, our first session, she wouldn't speak at all. She couldn't even get any words. She was so depressed. It was amazing that she got out of bed, right? And um, she started having a lot of these like issues around manage, like um, hating her body and obsessing over her fat and like all this kind of stuff. And she's not a fat person, right? So what? What happened? Um, well, in this particular situation, I'm not saying that depression never has anything to do with thoughts um, or feelings. Hey, Tell, nice to see you. Um, good to see you here. Thanks for saying hi when you jumped on. Depression has um, all, you know, has a lot to do with trauma and it has a lot to do with th thought patterns and stuff. But in her particular case, none of that, none of like the trauma or the thoughts or the self perception or her beliefs had really changed. The only thing that had changed was her lifestyle, right? Was the fact that she was now this like sedentary person for the first time really in her life in a long time. So that caught up with her on a biological level, right? And she was not at a place when I met her, she was really struggling so, so badly with depression. She's not at a place where she can work on her mind. Like she's not at a place where she can have deep down discussions around some of the thoughts that are coming up and trying to fight the negative thoughts. Like that all requires, honestly, a certain level of energy in your body because um, it's exhausting. You know, your brain is your largest organ. It, it uses the most amount of energy in your body by far. And in order to be doing the work on thoughts and mindfulness and processing and also, you need actual physical energy in your body. And if you don't have that physical energy and mental work is just not going to happen, right? So she was not in a place. And this is what frustrates me so much about kind of traditional therapy for depression it is it can be and is uh, often like very effective but you need to start with the body you know like you need to start by changing um, the biology so that you can get to a place where you can start working with the thoughts right so hey Bradley oh my god it's been so long since I've seen you good to see you here again so when you're starting with the body, like what are some of the key, 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 key things that you have to do or that I do or the mistakes that are made? So the first thing, I'll first start talking about mistakes and then kind of some of the alternatives in, in terms of how I run my life. First thing is like the morning, right? When you first wake up. So the bunch of mistakes I see in the morning. First mistake I see in the morning is obviously jumping out of bed and immediately checking your phone, um, which is going to remind you of all of the stressful things that you have to do during the day. Um, and it just, that is the worst thing that you can do. So what happens in the morning, the moment that you wake up, um, is yeah, all is obviously well. I'm here doing a live stream, Bradley. Um, what happens when you wake up first thing in the morning is that your body naturally produces um, lots of chemicals that you need to have energy in the day. And one of those chemicals is a, is a hormone called uh, cortisol, right? And so cortisol is, um, you know, it's good and helpful to an extent, but then it also is, it, it, if it's too much, it becomes a stress hormone that makes us feel really agitated. Um, and that really, uh, kind of tanks our mental health in the bigger picture. If it, if it's, if it stays, if it doesn't kind of go the low levels, don't go back down. And so what happens is you already have this kind of stress hormone being released, this cortisol being released. And then you turn and you read your phone and you remember all the things that you have to do during the day and all the crazy things that have to happen and blah, 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 blah. And you're feeling overwhelmed and blah, blah, blah. you're adding the cortisol. Your whole day is going to be tremendously worse <laughs> because you've added so much stress hormones within the first few like minutes of your day, right? So the other kind of morning mistake that I see, honestly, and this is a very controversial thing that I'm going to say in the world of exercise and working out, but in terms of mental and emotional health, I know that this is true because um, I've seen it with, you know, hundreds of clients at this point and God knows myself is clients working out like crazy in the morning. It's not good for you when you if you hustle like if you're running like crazy or like sprinting or jogging like of course it's going to be get your energy up of course it's like a you know like a shot of adrenaline 
But again, what that does is that adds to that level of cortisol because that's one of the things you need to get that power going and running. You have high levels of cortisol and you're going to feel like stressed throughout the day. You might have more clarity, but if you have issues, especially if you have any kind of issues with your adrenals or with your hormones, and so many of us do these days, Working out in the morning, like intense working out in the morning, especially intense cardio in the morning, is counter to your mental health and counter to your um, your physical health as well, to fat loss and all this kind of stuff. And there's tons of studies that you know that I can send you guys about this kind of stuff. So, what should you do in the morning? What do I do in the morning? Um, so, a few things. Um, number one is I take my heart rate variability. Um, heart rate variability. So before I even get out of the bed, I basically test my heart rate variability. I'm not going to do a huge, like, um, dive into heart rate variability today, but basically it's a device I use, <clears throat> um, which tells me how much I'm in my parasympathetic nervous system, which is all about rest and digest and slow down and relax. And then it, te and it tells me how much I'm in my sympathetic nervous system, which is all about like fight and flight. And it basically gives me a readiness score of how I should and can take on the day, right? So it gives me a, some awareness of how I'm doing um, in terms of my nervous system, et cetera, et cetera. So first I just check in like, hey, what's going on? And I do that on a mental and an emotional level, just kind of really checking in and feeling my body. But I also use data and tests because I love um, to be scientific about the way that I show up in the world. So do all of that, number one. Number two, then based on that, I decide, okay, this is like how much I'm going to be able to work out today. This is how much I'm going to be able to have like kind of stressful activities or whatever. Um, and then I start to plan my day. Um, then I do move. So movement in the morning is certainly important, just not crazy, crazy, crazy exercise. So what I do is like light movement. So I might do a few rounds of Surya Namaskar. I might go just outside in the sun for a walk if it's nice weather like it is now. Um, anything that's kind of like mild, but kind of just like gets your heart beating, gets your, your circulation flowing, all that kind of stuff. I'll also do breath work in the morning. So that's the kind of, um, exercise that actually stimulates your body for the whole day, keeps your blood sugar lower for the whole day, makes you just makes you feel healthier all day long, right? Ooh, look at all those. Um, I got like some angry faces, some happy faces, some love faces all the time. Um, so I knew what I said was going to be controversial. So sorry, guys. Um, but so that's um, the first kind of thing. This and then and and then in terms of what I eat and drink and how I eat and drink and all this kind of stuff. Again, I think probably the biggest issue that I see with people trying to manage their mental and emotional health um, is having coffee in the morning. And like I get it, right? Number one is like you're tired, you're overwhelmed, you're stressed, all this kind of stuff. Coffee is a quick fix. Number one. Number two is that you um, probably want to go to the bathroom and clear out your body and in the morning, and coffee certainly helps with that. And I'm not against coffee as fundamentally, but again, what does coffee do? Guess what? We're coming back to the same thing. When you have coffee in the morning, it dumps, and especially if you have adrenal issues, so especially if you have any kind of like thyroid or hormone issues, which, which I used to struggle with a lot. So, um, coffee basically dumps a bunch more cortisol into your body again. And when it, when it's dumping that, and so, yeah, again, you'll feel a little bit more awake cause that's the whole point. But then throughout the whole day, your nervous system is not balanced, not easy. Right. So like, some a few pretty easy hacks for that. Um, number one is matcha. Um, it's delicious and uh, it has some caffeine, so it does wake you up. Um, but it also does not kind of put your whole nervous system like in a craze, like coffee will. Um, not to mention it has tons of other benefits um, that I won't go into now, um, but that are really really important for you. So if you you know, switching to matcha um, could make all the difference. Switching to like an herbal tea, of course, also makes a great difference. Um, but I don't um, have any one of those. I have um, just lemon water. Um, and then I'll, sometimes I'll put in apple cider vinegar because that'll help stabilize my blood sugar through the day. Um, oil of oregano I'll sometimes put in, especially in the winter, just because it's really like nature's antibiotic. Sorry, uh, Bradley, what was what called? Um, I'm talking so fast. I'm not sure which name that you want. Okay, Caitlin, slow it down. Got it. All right. So <laughs> I told you guys I didn't have as much time today, so that's why I uh, 
So that's why I wanted to, I'm like word vomiting out all this kind of stuff, right? So, um, so I have lemon water. I put in oil of oregano, especially if it's in the season of um, kind of like the sick season because it's kind of nature's antibiotic, as they say. So that's so that can really help as well, right? So, um, you know, and then and then a little while later, um, I'll have some. So I always put at least a twelve hour gap in between when I have my dinner and when I have my breakfast. So whenever that is. Um, Oh, it's called, yeah, matcha, M-A-T, uh, Bradley, it's called matcha, M-A-T-C-H-A. Um, it's uh, delicious. It's like green tea kind of on steroids is the best way to summarize it, um, and it's amazing. So, uh, so yeah, so then an hour, about 12 hours after I've had my dinner, so if it's like, you know, so if I ate dinner at 8 p.m., and again, I'll get into timings of meals another time and why I eat at certain times. But if I eat dinner at 8 p.m., I won't have breakfast until 8 a.m. at the very earliest. Um, it's really important to give your body the time to digest the food and take some rest and um, put its energy into doing things other than just eating all the time. So I almost always have like a green smoothie of sorts. I mean, that's my favorite um, kind of thing to be having. So I have um, and, you know, People ask me sometimes, like, well, how do you put in so much kale or so much arugula or so much this without it just being, like, bitter? Um, and so in addition to usually putting, like, blueberries or some kind of berry, which are sweet but not that sweet, um, my other hack in a smoothie is um, – yeah, check it out, Bradley. It's awesome. My other hack in a smoothie is beets. They're so, 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 so sweet. So I just take some beets and I roast it and I put them in my smoothie and it's, like, super, super – um, delicious and sweet and like all natural, all natural sugars and so much fiber in the smoothie itself. Those sugars are easily digested and don't cause inflammation. Um, so yeah, so kind of taking a pause to come back to the story here is when I was working with, you know, this, this girl who I'm working with, who I told you guys is my new client. First time I met her, she was in such bad state. She literally couldn't like couldn't talk. She didn't say any words or whatever. And so I just, um, you know, was working with her and her and her mom to kind of understand how she eats and what her daily routine is. And we really just like changed the morning routine for one week. And I really mean one week um, to all the stuff that I was talking about and a few other things in terms of supplements and stuff specifically targeting what was going on in her body and her mind. Didn't work on the mental stuff at all, just worked on the physical stuff. Um, and really in the first week was just that morning routine. And within one week was dramatically better, like was able to, um, you know, was able, was go, getting out of bed again, was going to work again, was able to just like, you know, function in the world, still, um, still struggling, still feeling a little low on motivation and happiness, still having some negativity around her body. But functional and much better. And that was literally one week of changing her morning routine from having what she had like a coffee and a protein bar and then would go to the gym and work out like a, like a horse. Um, and that was causing more stress to her body. Um, and so we changed it out, changed this new routine and dramatically better within one week. That was the first thing. All right. So let's keep going through the day. Thank you for the love hearts. Yeah, it's amazing when you get to be part of people's healing experience and and more than that, just their experience of like finally learning to listen to and honor their body and their mind and take care of themselves. It's such an empowering thing to be able to know like, hey, this is what I need and I'm going to go get it or eat it or, you know, uh, make it or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's super cool. Um, all right. Let's keep going through the day. So. Um, the other, so the other, so as kind of she started getting better and we started kind of scanning through the rest of her day, you know, one of the things that we talked about, again, she was not in a space of really working on her mind. So I just kind of said, all right, well, what's your day like? And she was telling me about how literally she goes into the office at eight. She sits all day. Um, one time and like, she, like, even if she like disappears for 15 minutes, like her bosses will like be pissed off. Everyone has to have lunch at their desk. Um, and like, so she's just sitting all day and she said, and so, you know, she was like, it's really hard for me to get like any kind of exercise or movement through the day because my bosses are that intense. Okay. So for all you people out there who say like, I can't exercise, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the money or whatever. Listen up. This one's for you. 
Um, so she had this job where she was at from 8 a.m. every day until about 7 p.m. every day. So a long day sitting there. She said one time she was in the bathroom for 15 or like 10 minutes talking to her mom on the phone. And like she was gone from her desk for that long. And her boss literally came into the bathroom and was like, you know, is something wrong? Why are you away from your desk for so long? Like, that's the culture. So, uh, <laughs> so, and I know a lot of you are like, you know, from like big cities can probably relate to that. Um, and, and in general, we all have this kind of like always on culture, right? Even, even if our bosses don't inflict that, like it's just kind of a lot of the psychology of today. So I'm like, okay, well, all of the research has come out to show that like in blue zones, for example, which are places around the world where people are kind of consistently live into their hundred, want into their hundreds, don't face disease, all this kind of stuff. Um, those places, what it's, it's about, it's not actually about having one really strong kick-ass workout. It's actually about just like moving through your day and moving naturally through your day, like not having to do any crazy stuff. So we were talking about how, how she can do this. And so we literally were like, you know, I understand how hard your situation is. What else can you do? So we talked about every time she takes a phone call, be walking around the office a little bit, right? Like just doing little things like that makes such a difference, right? Then we also talked about like right before each meal, how she should go into the bathroom because right before each meal, you really need to prepare your body to have the energy to digest all the stuff that you're about to put in it. Um, and you want to make sure your blood sugar can stay stable and not get spiked because that's what leads to a lot of the mood issues throughout the day. Um, and so we, we, we just said literally go into the bathroom, use the handicap stall and do 30, um, like 30 lunges or 20, you know, burpees. And like, so those are really, really simple, easy activities, but they, um, what they do is they kind of really get your body moving so that you can, and it's something like, I can't remember the exact statistic, but doing that increases your body's like digestibility by like 40%, meaning it gets the food gets more digested more easily and just properly when you've moved your body right before your meal. So we talked about doing that um, and just kind of like at key points of the day, getting her body moving so that, that it can be digesting and flowing and things like that. Um, then we talked about, so she does like, you know, and so exercise is important. So we talked about like, okay, later in your day, what's your schedule? And what she would usually do is she would come home, um, and she would make like a cauliflower rice um, and, you know, she would put cauliflower rice and like cut a few other vegetables and have that with as her dinner. Um, no protein, no fats, no anything else. Um, and she wouldn't exercise um, like at all. So um, we, I was like, okay, well, let's hack that stuff. So um, so first thing is that it's really important for your mood, for your brain, for your body to be eating healthy fats during the day. I mean, that's just a very, that and probiotics might be the two most critical food, um, uh, or supplement related things that you want to consider. Um, but when she was, uh, so, so, so I said instead, you know, everybody would assume like she's eating vegetables. Great for dinner. That is great. But, you know, actually it's much better to have a lot of your carbohydrate, like a lot of your vegetables throughout the day and at night to have some healthy fats because it's also going to help you sleep. So um, eating healthy fats at night um, means something like having, let's say, salmon with um, spinach that's cooked in uh, ghee or something like that or, or something that's cooked or vegetables that are roasted in olive oil and all this kind of stuff, right? So really important to have healthy fats, really important to have protein. So we made sure to put those in her diet and she was saying, you know, and, and we were talking a little bit about some of the stuff she was eating and some of the oils she was using and they were all really inflammatory, which again is really not good for your mental health. So um, we we're talking about little changes she can make, you know, and I was like, when you go out to a restaurant, all you have to do is literally ask your waiter to not cook your Brussels sprouts in um, canola oil or any of those other inflammatory oils that cause all this inflammation and ick in the body and just ask them to cook it in olive oil. He will have it and he will be able to do that. So, um, so, so, you know, ask for that. It's little simple changes that you can make that makes a huge difference in your body, right? So, we would do, um, she would change out that. She had started adding some healthy fats, all this kind of stuff. Um, her workout, we, we said, so basically between 4 and 7 p.m., some people say 4 and 6 p.m., kind of depends on the person. 
um, your body's kind of in like peak ability. If you're on a good circadian rhythm, your body is at kind of its peak ability to be able to make the most of your workout, handle all the cortisol because it's gone down from the morning hours. Um, and it can do, and, and just, uh, really use everything that you're, you're doing, um, uh, build your muscles, do all this other kind of stuff. So 4 to 7 p.m. is if you're going to have like a workout, do it uh, like an intense workout, do it from 4 to 7 p.m. And again, they're not focused as much on cardiovascular health. Don't go run on a treadmill the whole time. Again, if you're focused on emotional and mental health, do strength training. That does so, 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 so much more for your mental health. And you only need to do it like three, three or four times a week, you know, to have like muscles like it's not like it's not you know i don't work out like crazy <laughs> um i really don't it's just about being um strategic in my 30 minute strength workouts a few minutes a uh, week a few times a week so i did that um and the days that she wouldn't um work out instead of that she would go and get in nature right because nature is also shown to help balance a lot of our hormones again specifically cortisol it brings down cortisol especially if we're in the forest or in the trees or something like that so on the day she wouldn't do a strength workout she would go and like ride her bike on the beach um you know or walk in a park or do something like that um and then at nighttime we kind of like we're scanning what what she's doing around sleep and you know surprise surprise she was only sleeping five and a half or six hours a night um which is not enough for a sound mental and emotional health um and so um and she was sleeping in like a room that was really hot and your body actually goes best into deep sleep um and keeps you there when your room is between like a 64 and 66 degrees and for everybody who's watching this in like Canada and the UK and Australia and India and um, I'm pretty sure that's like 18 degrees Celsius if I remember correctly um, but you can do the translation Google will know better than I do um, and so we um, and so we uh, lowered the temperature in her room so she was getting much more deep sleep throughout the night um, we got her to you know be religiously committed to sleeping you know at least being in the bedroom for eight hours and really trying to sleep for those eight hours um, and then in terms of improving her ability to fall asleep to fall asleep which was also kind of struggling at that point um, she used just like a really basic app it's called sleep stream it has awesome binaural beats um, and it just kind of really really helps kind of put your brain on the wavelength of um, sleep and so you know they're not big or expensive or crazy time-consuming hacks they're things that are make you know, little, little things that you change about your day, but that make a huge difference, right? And so, you know, as I told you, the first week that I met her, she was really focused on fo uh, on really improving the first half of her day. And then the second week, we were focused on the second half of the day, never talked about the emotional stuff that was going on, like, or the psychological stuff, you know, in terms of like the depressive thoughts specifically, because she just wasn't there yet. And honestly, I saw her yesterday for the third time. And after literally just two weeks of changing these key lifestyle things, she's doing dramatically better. And now we get to start the work of kind of working on some of the kind of old mental habits that don't serve her and that were kind of contributed, contributing to and really exacerbated um, within this kind of depressive period, but her depression and like her low confidence and all the negativity that she was having was triggered by her change in lifestyle, by the sedentary lifestyle, not, not a lot of healthy fats, not a lot of protein, you know, trying to, and, and so the best way out at least to begin, of course, was also by her lifestyle and by her body and by what she ate. Right. And I think that like, coaches in general just do not talk about like lifestyle stuff when it comes to mental health in like a in, a in a powerful enough way and it's really important that everybody here like hear this testimonial that in two weeks of changing her lifestyle in these pretty simple ways she was able to make dramatic changes to her mental health how she felt about herself her confidence all that kind of stuff so made a huge 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 huge, huge difference um, and that's often the portal in, in order to be able to even have a calm enough mind to practice things like thought revision and challenging your thoughts and all the other stuff that I so frequently talk on 
um, on, on my lives. So, so that's, um, you know, really what I wanted to kind of give as a gist. Of course, you know, anybody who knows me knows that I'm super scientific about all of my life. So, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a disease, you know, kind of an illness or a sickness or um, any kind of mental and emotional health process. I have ways of measuring throughout the day. I have all natural supplements for everything and anything I might want to treat or improve or whatever. Um, I am very scientific about the way that I kind of like measure the quality of my sleep and all this kind of stuff. But those are, I think, the major, major inputs for you to start to just make some key changes to your life. Life, right and uh, you know I wanted to really segue this which um, into talking about this this course that I'm offering called called radiant confidence right and so again um, one of the things that I think is unique about me as a coach is that I will never 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 let you only work from here up right and yes there's work to do on your confidence and like in terms of the way you think and yes there's work to do um, you know in terms of some of the smaller external things like making eye contact or things like that but really like confidence comes from feeling healthy and strong and happy happy and knowing how to hack your biology and your psychology in order to be like positive and optimistic and able to be resilient to when you fail or when you fall down and able to take risks and know that you're going to be able to psychologically recover from that right and if you're not focusing on your bodily health as well and your habits and your lifestyle going to be really, really hard for you to maintain like consistent confidence. And so that's one of the things that really sets a, apart this confidence course that I was offering is we go very deeply, of course, into what are the things that lower your confidence in terms of the beliefs that you have, the thoughts that you have, the perspectives that you have on the world, where you might be playing a victim accidentally, where you might be like trying to be nice to everyone and that's actually just making you like inside really resent like you know full of resentment um, or when you're just trying to be like the kindest person ever but really that's just making you the small meek person like of course we're gonna work on all the behavioral and emotional stuff within it but we're also really gonna talk about your body and how to have a biology of confidence so um, I am like officially announcing the course here so I'm so excited for all of you who are like still here and listening um, it's gonna be a six-week course uh, you can uh, where I'm going to release a video every Monday taking you through um, five different modules of confidence. And so, again, the second week is a lot about the biology of confidence, like what's involved in that. Um, and then in the other weeks, you know, of course, we're going into um, psychology. We're going into how to take chances, how to approach your fears in a way that feels safe, how mindfulness can help you, um, where it's going to support you. Really, I mean, if ever it's going, I'm going to really, really teach you how to hack your mind and your body to feel more confident, right? It's the inner work and it's the outer work. It's a mind, body, soul approach. It's so, 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 so powerful. And, and it's not just for the aim of like improving your confidence generally, right? It's helping you be like the badass in life that you want to be, right? Like your low confidence means that you spend how many hours a day criticizing yourself? Like imagine if all that mental and emotional energy was going into you, you know, being a rock star and achieving your dreams, right? Um, having low confidence means that you spend an inordinate amount of time like stopping yourself from doing the things you want, right? So for example, like you want to be in a different career or you want to get a raise or you want to do something, but you don't want to ask, you don't want to step on somebody's toes, you don't want to offend them, you're not sure if you're worthy, like all this other stuff. Like, that's why we're working on confidence, right? Like, that's why we're, um, so that you, so that you can get out of your own way and go for the things that you, that you really want in life and that, and that you've been working hard toward, towards building, right? We're also going to work on, you know, how that, how low confidence like comes into relationships and how you end up, you know, trying to be nice and pleasing people and rather than just like really, really like stating your needs, stand, standing up for your needs and being able to not take personally whatever the other person is going through, right? Like not, not find like, okay, if this person's having an up or a down, I don't need to take it all personally and make it all, you know, about me. I get to just like know that I'm wonderful, that I'm doing my best, that I'm worthy of being here, that I'm 
worthy of respect from this person. And like, I don't have to be so susceptible to their opinions and thoughts and beliefs every second of the day, right? So again, all of this is done, all of achieving those, those important goals are done by working on your mind, your body, and your soul. And so that's what this approach is, totally radical approach to working on confidence. And aligned with everything that I preach, it really, it's about radiance, right? It's about shining so freaking bright that you magnetize to you everything you want in your life. Um, and you do that by being strong and confident and healthy and beautiful and having great ways of thinking. So if you guys are really interested, uh, the landing page is in the comments right now. Go ahead, click sign up. It's starting on Monday, August 6th. Um, it's going to be a like self-paced course. So you can, it's on Monday, the first one, I'll drop the first video, but you can do it anytime you want that week. Plus it's going to be a 30 day action plan. So like on Monday, there'll be a video. And then on Tuesday, it's like, how are you going to put that into practice? Wednesday, it's how you're going to put that into practice. Thursday, it's how you're going to put that into practice, right? And different practices to really support you. So it's really, really deep diving into building your confidence and just making you kick ass in life. So if you guys are um, as excited as I am to be radiant and beautiful and shining and confident and you believe in the mind, body, soul approach and you believe in habits, um, then come hang out with me. It's super cheap, super affordable course um, for six weeks of some of my most awesome and powerful con uh, content when it comes to confidence. And so let's meet over there. I'm really excited to see you guys uh, in the Radiance Confidence course. And we start on Monday. So I will see you there. Lots of love to you. As always, in the comments, ask your questions. Just say hello. Send me some love. And I'll see you guys soon. Mwah.